62 now, so we're going to go to the bed, we're going to go to the two, now three, 63, 64, 65. Good afternoon, y'all. I'm the old kid with Houston Auto Auction. We're going to do something a little different today. We're going to teach you how to buy cars in the lanes the smart way. I got Mickey, my arbitration manager, coming in in just a minute, so we'll get right back to you. Okay, I told you uh, just a few minutes ago that I was going to bring Mickey in. Mickey is the head of our condition report riders, and he also does our arbitration. Quite a tough job as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Mickey, what do you think about all this? I would agree on a tough job because I'm the uh, guy everybody comes to, and I'm their best friend until I tell them, no, it can't be arbitrated. <laughs> right, right. And so that's why we wanted to do a little informative video about how to buy cars at the auction the right way. Um, there's the wrong way to buy cars, and I can tell you one of the wrong ways to buy cars is go out here on sale day, don't preview the cars, just go in the lanes, and when you see something you like, start bidding. And then get into a competitive mode where you just keep bidding, right? Yeah. And pay way, way too much for the car. Would you agree with that? Yeah, but in the auction business, we like that. Yeah, we do. I have to admit we do, but you can't arbitrate for that, right? Correct. Can you come into your office and say, Mickey, I paid too much for the car, I want out. Pricing is not an arbitratable condition. No. So, <laughs> exactly. So, Mickey and I decided that, you know, because he does condition reports, he understands the, you know, the condition of the car completely. And, you know, we talked about this before we started the video. And so we feel that you should go online the night before the sale. And you should know what you're kind of looking for as far as vehicles and make a list of all of the vehicles that you see online that fit that agenda and then go into each vehicle and preview their condition report. And that's where Mickey comes in. Mickey, what are they going to find when they go into a condition report as far as what does it detail about the car? We have basically really two different types. We have a, a basic one which carries about seven shots of the vehicle. It's your standard four corners interior, motor, uh, any prominent severe damage. Then we have your clients that require a full detailed uh, picture of the car, which is a complete CR, and that's where we'll do panel for panel, uh, any minor scratches, dents. Um, we try to include everything we can see for the people, especially online buyers. It gives them a better uh, photo library of the car's condition as opposed to the people in lanes. Right, now do you, you also, do you guys check for frame or that kind of stuff when you're looking at these vehicles? Correct, and since there's so many variables of a structural call, uh, we do inspect all of them uh, from from standard light duty trucks and all passenger cars. Not, We don't worry about the uh, heavy equipment and specialty vehicles because people that are buying those already know they've been altered. Yeah, exactly, a absolutely. So, you know, that gives you, that gives you something to start, a starting point when you're the night before you can go in there and you can look and you know you might like a car and think oh you know this one's going to fit and then all of a sudden realize it's got frame damage and not something that you want to uh, deal with or you might even find out that it's got some kind of announcement like previous uh, uh, police car uh, or uh, you know total loss that was repaired and put back on the street or salvage there's any number of things that we will do our best to make sure we inform you of because we want to sell cars. We don't want to unwind them. We don't want them coming back. So, you know, the next step to me is after you've got that list of vehicles and you've went through the condition reports and, the, and you feel comfortable with the cars that you're going to try to buy, then hmm, I guess you should probably price them, right? Would you not agree, Mickey? Yeah, look at the uh, pricing scope of with MMR or Black Book, whatever tool they use. Yeah, whatever tool you use. And MMR is one that's used quite often. Um, it's a decent tool. I don't think it's as exactly perfect because it kind of rolls everything into one. But, um, but you can also look at Black Book, NADA, and decide what you're going to pay for the car. And I say that, decide what you're going to pay for the car and not pay more. Because a lot of times you get in the lanes and it gets competitive. And the guy across the way is bidding and you don't want him to win the car. And the next thing you know... <laughs> You're right what we were talking about earlier. You're upside down in this car, and we can't help you mm -hmm. at that point. So sale day, then I would come out here an hour or so before the sale. I would walk the lane, and I would look at those specific cars that I have on my list, and I would kind of compare them to your CR. Right, and uh, CR is not all inclusive. So for the buyer that's looking for that special vehicle for their lot, it, it's best for them to do, get out here, start it up the keys, rent them, 
start it up, put it in gear, drive, reverse, see how the transmission sounds, and do a good visual themselves. And if they have questions, they can ask one of the employees to help if they need something further. Absolutely. Um, we try to keep uh, employees out there on the line on sale day to answer those kind of questions. They are not, you know, perfect at answering everything when it comes to that kind of stuff, but they will do their best to give you good service and lead you in the right direction. So now it comes time to buy the car. And you're in the lanes, and the car comes in. Mick, I'm gonna, I'm willing to pay five thousand for that car. Should I just bid five thousand right as soon as that car comes in? If you're asking me, you say sure, but usually most people step back and wait for the first guy to bid and see where it starts at, and then they start running it up. Yeah, that's, that's probably a wise thing. Most of the car guys out there know that already. We're doing this kind of for the newer people in the car yeah. business. I find a lot of times they come out here in their first two or three trips out here. Uh, they get stung. <laughs> it's a tough lesson, and we want to try to, in, you know, help you avoid it. Uh, anything else we need to cover, Mickey, as far as buying cars? I would go in and introduce myself to the arbitration manager, in this case, Mickey. Mickey. Um, and I would find out what are the rules of the auction, because we all t tend to go by NAAA standards, but each auction kind of has its own rules as well as the NAAA rule. For instance, we offer... A sale day drive. You cannot post sale inspect it. It's good for only sale day. And that means you need to get out there and test drive that car immediately because if you wait uh, and you find something wrong, you're not going to be able to get out of it. Then we have other cars that are full green light cars. You can post sale inspect them. You can buy a seven day or a 14 day uh, more or less guarantee that uh, you'll be able to bring the car back. We also have certified cars, what, gold, silver, and platinum? Or hey, correct you. You said 14-day PSI. We no longer offer that. Only okay, we days. no longer offer 14-day. I'm glad you corrected seven me. Seven-day PSI. Seven-day PSI. Um, but that gives you, especially if you're buying out of town, gives you a chance to get the car back to your lot, make sure what you bought is what you bought, uh, and you've got a guarantee to bring it back uh, as long as you've notified us by that seventh day. We also have certified cars. I, I'll add that for the online buyers, uh, for a peace of mind, uh, a lot of times they don't have an ability to get out and inspect the car the day of the sale. Yes. And so it, it's in their best interest to either get a sale day check from us or a seven day PSI. We can become their inspector, and as long as anything that is uh, under the $500 threshold per NAAA, it's still a good sale. If it's over 500 then we start the negotiation between seller and buyer on what it would take to make the sale happen. Absolutely. Wonderful. Um, on the certified cars, we've got three or so different levels now, right? It's platinum, platinum, gold, and silver. Gold and silver. They're all based on the NAAA standards, um, and it just takes another level of assurance that the seller is actually the one putting that in place for their vehicle to uh, let the buyers coming in knowing there's a, a bit of confidence to each level grade that there it's a little tighter standards of less body damage, less wear and tear. Uh, engine, transmission, drivetrain, all those factors. Oh, I see. Okay, so like a silver might allow a cracked windshield, but a platinum won't. Right, or right. Whatever. Okay, so it's all different levels of certification. We've got that listed in the lanes and in the hallway so that you know before you buy one. Um, we're going to try to wrap this up. We've got Dr. Al coming up next. And you never know what Dr. Al's going to do. I love every one of his videos. He's always got some little tidbit of advice when he gets finished. Um, with that said, I'll wrap it up after Dr. Al. Until then, we'll see you in the lanes. See ya. Dr. Al, again, one more time, having a great day in spite of the weather. We're looking forward to Tuesday, next Tuesday, when we'll have a, a sale, and, I, and there will be quite a few uh, repos and some fleet vehicles in the sale that I hope all of you will come and look at. I was just counting over my list, and I noticed I've got about seven or eight from Anchor Drilling, uh, Citation Oil and Gas has seven or eight. Now, the City of Katy has four vehicles in the sale, uh, as well as my credit unions look like they have about 40, 45 vehicles in the sale. I have some from Way Holding, a couple of vans I noticed, and uh, UTMB. Anyway, it looks like a pretty good lineup for next Tuesday. I hope you'll be here and I hope you'll come. And always remember, I like to give these lessons, obstacles, are the thing we see when we take our eyes off our goals. So don't let obstacles get in your way of your goals. Thank you very much. Hope to see you Tuesday. Bye. You gotta love Dr. Al. I mean, every time he says something, it's a lesson. Obstacles, don't take your eyes off of them. They'll get in the way of your goals. 
Anyway, with that said, don't forget to like us, share us, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of the social entities. Be sure and go down there and subscribe. We got bloopers coming up next. Hope to see you in the lanes. Adios, the old kid. Yeah, I thought this ain't worth a lot of money. Eighty thousand bucks. Hang on, say let me fix my hair before I take my picture out. Sixty grand, sixty thousand. Huh? Our YouTube video for the day. What are you up to? Hustling. I hear you. You know, I don't know how you, you think I can take this serious when you keep touching me. You need to stay to yourself over there, dude, okay? No feeling on my legs. Well, according to some of the information I received, that's kind of how you like to have the conversation with goats. <laughs> <laughs> Is the video going, sissy? You gotta tell me action, girl. Mm -hmm.